Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing at the Madden Chiefs as always. Got a gameplay video for you guys today. This is not a money play video. The last couple videos have been money plays of the gameplays. This is going to be a full gameplay tips video. And the topic of today's video is the do's and don'ts for winning games in Madden. Uh, now, ultimately, these are going to be offensive and defensive tips. Uh, these are things that you're going to do throughout the entire course of the game. Whether you're on offense or defense, you're going to want to stick to these principles. And over the course of the game, uh, it will ultimately lead to more wins. Wins. It'll lead to more successful conversions, uh, more wins series to series, and more wins game to game. Uh, before I get into the video, though, if you guys could do me a little bit of a favor, scroll down a little bit, hit the like button, like, shares, comments, all that stuff really helps out my channel. So if you want to show support, show support that way. And other than that, if you like what you see, make sure you stick around by hitting the subscribe button. This is a gameplay that I used in another video recently that I said if you guys wanted to see uh, the entire gameplay, let me know, and that's exactly how it turned out. So you might know some of these plays uh, based off of the fact that I did show the first series in that video. So one of the first do's, you always want to take shots. You always want to push the ball down the field. It's a good way to keep your opponent from playing a lot of press like he is here. So I take a shot, but you can tell right off the bat it's not going to work. So don't force it. you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. So in this next play, I'm going to turn to a defender pretty quick. So, you know, you want to take shots shots but you can't let it hang yourself by by forcing it. if it's not there you got to switch over start playing defense uh, and minimize the damage uh, next play I'm going to push the ball one more time as I catch my opponent in a cover too so we're going to go ahead and hit him right over the middle uh, and then we're going to you know minimize the damage one more time we're not going to get greedy we're going to safe catch it make sure that this safety or this linebacker doesn't come over and blast the ball loose uh, but if I were to try to rack catch that and go right up the middle or something like that it would have been a total waste of a play so you got to know when to hold him once again and when to fold him this next tip is more of a defensive tip. I do think it's a good idea to be aggressive. I just don't think it's a good idea to do that with the safeties. As you can see, my opponent here, he moves the safety down to the box, and sure enough, he's going to get dropped right over the top for a big one-play touchdown. That's what safeties are there for. you got to play the length of the field, which is going to be one of my next tips on the defensive side. As the majority of your defense should be based around essentially just not giving up touchdowns. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing here. That's why, ultimately, I'm going to pass commit pretty much every single time because that's I mean whether it's my setups on my defense or actually literally pass committing uh, because I'm not too concerned if, if I want to you know if, you, if I give up run plays and my opponent walks down the field it doesn't really matter as long as I keep them out of the end zone because I know I'm going to score touchdowns so I have to keep my opponent to field goals and if you can do that conversion you're always going to win games and on this next play I do something that I should do which is don't run commit especially blitzing don't blitz run plays and don't literally run commit I didn't do that here but I was blitzing blitzing on a run play is a good way to get housed uh, when it comes to the fact that there's no real safety help anymore like I said you always want to play the length of the field that's one of the few times where I did not do that and it doesn't really help as he still gets the first down on the next play once again pass committing and I still stop the run so you know that was a play that was a full pass defense a slightly different look a zone coverage look uh, but you can see I get the stop without you know doing anything drastic then on the next play still full pass commit you can see how nope. now it's eventually starting to catch up the the, the the system the scheme is starting to catch up as he's in a third and long and now you can really tailor your defense gotcha, uh, as he forces it which like i said you don't want to do that if he just would have threw it away he could at the very least got a field goal and made this game a little more competitive to start uh next series i mean i'm going to do the same thing there's nothing here on this next play i'm not going to force it i'm going to throw it away move out of the pocket live the fight another down that's going to be important take what the defense gives you on the next play though fourth and seven i go for it this is another scenario where you do not want to force it and what i mean by that is a lot of people when they need seven yards on a fourth and seven they're just going to look for seven yards I'm going to trust my read, whether it's first down, fourth down, whatever. I'm not going to force a seven-yard throw just because I need seven yards because that's a good way to throw an interception or basically, you know, mess up and make a mistake. So back in the defensive side, once again, not run committing. You can see I'm having success even in a pass commit. I'm still having success. A full pass defense. I'm still stopping the run enough. That plus the fact that I'm doing my job on the offensive side, he's going to have to pass to keep up, which is ultimately the plan. So then on third and long, we're still playing the length of the field. We're not going to uh, change up our 
more defense just yet. You can see my opponent here. He's trying to bomb it up because the score is pretty much dictating that he has to nope. push the ball down the field, and he's just throwing in a quadruple coverage. So fourth and eight, this is one of the few times where you don't want to play the length of the field. Um, you're going to want to make sure that on these particular situations that you really just play uh, the sticks or play you know, play that situation. That he, there he needed eight yards. I should have customized my defense. That's something that I didn't do because I was having success for the most part up to that point with the defense that I was running. But on third down, fourth downs, critical downs, those are the few times where you're going to want to customize your defense to what your opponent is doing. And then you can see I'm still having a, a, a pretty easy time stopping the run uh, based off the fact that, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much in a pass commit defense uh, and there's really nothing that he's going to do. He's just not getting enough. So third and six, here's where I was saying, like I said, I'm going to customize my defense. He's been hitting with a lot of crossers, a lot of uh, drag routes and stuff like that. And you can see here he does one more time. I tried, but ultimately he still got the first down so it's not always going to work out but it is what it is then now that he's inside the red zone i'm going to play the length of the field in a different way i'm coming out in cover twos uh cover twos with hard flats uh heavy run defenses because ultimately i think this guy's more of a runner and you can see now that the field's getting shorter nope. i can play these shorter defenses and have success and then on third down once again playing the you know on third and fourth down you're going to want to play it a little bit differently i try to tailor a defense here where i'm coming out in a cover four quarters uh which is something that's just a, a much better pass defense defense and a slightly different look and sure enough we get the sack uh, and we force that field goal so like i said i don't mind giving up field goals i'm scoring touchdowns so i don't really care if i give up field goals if he wants to walk himself down the field it's all good on the next couple play those i make a few mistakes uh I, you always want to play how the score dictates i'm up two touchdowns there's no reason for me to force it with only a few seconds left in the fourth and there's even less reason for me to not play the length of the field like i've been saying uh on the next play as you can see i try to basically customize like it's a third down or a fourth down even though that it's not a critical situation and sure enough I mess up and I give up a huge one play touchdown uh, letting me, my opponent right back into the game so you can see how easily if you don't follow these principles you can easily go from you know blowing your opponent out to having a ball game based off the fact that I just wasn't following my own rules so you know starting off the second half he's got the ball um, he's still hitting me with those drags still hitting me with those crossers uh, based off of that I mean this is still it's an early down to do this but since he's done that enough I'm going to hit him with a hard flat there um, just to try to uh, force a throw to the other side of the field sure enough he has to throw right into uh, some pretty tight coverage gotcha, and we get an interception so there I jumped the gun a little bit it wasn't third down or fourth down uh, but I was just getting sick of him running that and I had I think I had a pretty good beat uh, on what he was doing uh, on the next series though not a lot of success i'm going to play as the score dictates one more time though i'm not going to force it i have the lead i'm going to play with the lead i'm going to punt the ball back i'm going to make him go the length of the field i'm going to make him earn it so on the other side like i said i'm going to still continue to, pl to play defense the length of the field because ultimately i'm really just trying to keep him from scoring a touchdown because i'm still up four uh field goals don't really matter on the next play though he gets a pretty good run uh which i've mostly kept him in check most of the game i didn't really expect I me mean, reggie bush obviously is, is it looks like a cheat code i mean he's super fast i don't know how he got away from me there uh but now i'm down so now that i'm down on the scoreboard uh we have to play the score once again i have to basically play as if i'm losing i mean I, i'm not gonna you know now i'll probably go for it more push the ball more be more aggressive stuff like that um you know we have to get back on top of the scoreboard as you can see i mean we're, we're gonna still be methodical because you also have to be smart enough to play the clock i'm in the fourth quarter i don't want to score and give him the ball back with too much time so you're going to see we're going to hit him with a lot of run plays uh and i think ultimately he's going to uh get tired of that and he's going to start making mistakes so you can see right here i mean we're just going to get that first down turn over those sticks that's one of the most important parts on the next play uh we hit him with a nice you know inside run adjustment and we're in the driver's seat we're killing clock on him we're having the best of both worlds on the next play he doesn't defend the length of the field one more time he actually run commits uh because i guess he was you know thinking that he had to stop the bleeding and sure enough i throw a touchdown right over the top real easy read uh as everybody's pretty much wide open when you run commit that's another reason you don't want to run commit you want to always pass commit play the length of the field so now i'm on the defensive side first and 10 he's got to go the full length of the field with a couple minutes a couple timeouts so i'm not going to do anything drastic uh, i'm going to let him kill clock on himself he wants to dink and dunk he can do that uh, ultimately it's going to work out for me i'm going to pass commit the entire way down the field pretty much all the principles i've been talking about i'm going to roll them all into one here and do them all on the last drive play the score i'm up four don't really care if i give him a field goal you know that's something that if he wants to to, to get three he can have three uh, but i just have to make sure i try 
try to keep him in bounds as much as possible, kill the clock as much as possible. All these things are really going to be important uh, on this last drive. And if I can stick to these principles, I should be able to walk away with a victory. So while he is walking down the field, and, you know, this is problematic. I mean, obviously, I would have loved to get an interception a long time ago or come up with a big stop. Um, I know that all I, the situation is what the situation is. He needs a touchdown. That's the only thing that can win the game for him. So he can get as close as he wants. But once he gets down here, a lot of people struggle in the red zone anyway. That's part of the whole part of the plan. You can see on the next play, I mean, he almost gets outside. Reggie Bush nope. almost makes another really big play. But this cover two hard flats is going to be a really good red zone defense, and that's exactly what I'm playing now. I'm playing the red zone D. Nope. You can see we're getting stops. On the next play, though, he comes out in a five-wide set. I'm not going to hold my timeouts. not in a critical situation like this. If I don't like what I'm seeing, I'm going to trust my read. I'm going to trust my eyes. And then on the next play, I'm going to do that again as he comes out in a two-wide receiver set. So I'm going to go right back. I was going to go to a dime, but I'm going to go right back to that 4-4 because I see a run offensive formation. I'm going to come out in my run defense, uh, and you know I'm basically going to let it ride with this. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But at the end of the day, I have to trust my reads. I have to trust my eyes. My opponent's been running the ball and having more success running the ball all game. So I'm going to trust he's going to run the ball. And on this very next play, critical situation, I actually run commit. Sure enough, he does come out and run, and we get the stop. Nope. And that's game. He doesn't have enough time to run another play. He went for a run play, tries to hurry up and snap it, but, you know, doesn't have time. And we're walking away with the W. So hopefully you guys uh, can, you know, understand the system that I had going there. Uh, try to stick to those principles. It should help win more games. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more gameplays, do me a favor. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.